Vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world, second only to saffron. Scientists are now researching how Florida could cash in on the industry. Could the vanilla bean turn into a potential replacement for the struggling citrus industry, or would consumers turn their nose up to the thought of Florida-grown vanilla? To learn more about the spice's future in the Sunshine State, we are joined by Dr. Jacqueline Kropp and Dr. Shingbo Wu of the University of Florida. Welcome, Dr. Kropp and Dr. Wu. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Kropp, let's start with you. When, when we think of vanilla, we think of places like Madagascar. Tell us what in your research says that, you know, potentially Florida could be a great place for this crop. So, Florida's climate is similar to where vanilla is currently being grown. As you mentioned, it's mostly produced in Madagascar. And currently, the U.S. is the largest importer of vanilla grown in Madagascar. Um, so, we're hoping to capture some of that market. Dr. Wu, we've heard that vanilla plants can be very labor intensive, temperamental. Um, are, are, are those problematic for our region? Yes, it, it, can, it, can, it does have a challenge uh, uh, at this moment, but we are talking uh, with uh, new technologies that can be potentially resolve that challenge. Uh, challenge issue. Um, the other thing is, um, despite the, the the problems that you were mentioning, I think the the uh, economics is really uh, great uh, in terms of um, growing banana as compared to other crops. So, Dr. Crop, we know that Florida's citrus industry has been devastated by citrus greening and obviously other issues. Um, are there any similar threats to vanilla, or are there things? Um, that really make us think that this could be a big help to, to, to farmers in our region looking at potentially a new crop? So we are currently in the early stages of exploring the viability of the market. Um, so most of my work is focused on the consumer's perception mm -hmm. of Florida-grown vanilla and their willingness to pay um, for products grown domestically. And maybe Dr. Wu can speak more of the, the pests and disease threats here in the U.S., not not such a screening. So vanilla is a new crop, and in in terms of disease, this is actually a very uh, resilient crop. And as a matter of fact, uh, many years ago, we we actually have a, a vanilla uh, farms in Puerto Rico, and it was a big crop. However, it is a uh, disease called Fusarium root rot that we actually um, that has caused the big problems. And so far, it's the biggest issue uh, in farming vanilla. And unfortunately. Uh, we do have um, genetic resistant materials that, that we are currently um, working on to improve the resistance so that you will be able to incorporate into a commercial vanilla species that we can uh, um, um, resolve this issue. In terms of pests, so far we have not observed um, any um, pressing issues with, with pests or, or insects. So um, really the the other, uh, the other issue that potential um, potentially we will have is actually the, the the weather. But as I mentioned, vanilla is really resilient and and it's a it's a orchid and really loves the place and it's um, has a great ability to recuperate after damage. So I think this 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 is a very promising crop to Florida. So Dr. Crop, you said you are studying how the public might respond to this? Do, what do we know so far? So far, we have done a couple of uh, sensory panels uh -huh. where we've had individuals come in and sample the Florida-grown product extracts alongside uh, commercially available products such as McCormick's, both their artificial and their extract. Uh -huh. um, and in the blind taste, we actually found that our panelists preferred the artificial vanilla. Really? Um, but the ratings of the Florida Grown was very similar to the McCormick's vanilla extract. Uh -huh. um, and uh, we repeated the analysis with uh, another study using two products grown in Florida and then actually providing some information about whether or not it was the natural product uh, or the artificial. And uh, we found when the, the panelists had information about the products, um, they, they rated the Florida products, again, very similar to the commercially available McCormick's. So is it all about marketing, the fact that it is a 
homegrown product in the USA? So, it, so from the results of the second study are very preliminary, but it does appear that consumers are interested in the product um, being natural, so are willing to pay more when it is labeled as a natural vanilla extract, um, kind of regardless of where it's produced. So the United States doesn't have a commercial vanilla production industry currently. Uh, we import more than $194 million worth of vanilla. How hard is it to, to launch uh, an industry like this and make an impact in the world? Great question. So, uh we aim to really uh, jumpstart um, vanilla industry in Florida through genetics and breeding. So we are looking at, because um, given the current issues with extreme weather and instability of the uh, market, so we really want to make sure that we have a stable supply and we can tackle this by uh, breeding uh, new varieties that has um, um, high quantity um, of high quantity beans as well as new flavor profiles. And we have few farmers that are already um, growing vanilla and not at a small, relative small scale and has been proven successful. So uh, we feel give it about three, four years, uh, we will have, um, have more results coming up very soon. Dr. Kropp, I'll let you have the final word. So if we look at the history of vanilla in Madagascar, it's actually fairly recent as well. Uh, my understanding is that their, their vanilla industry really took off in the 90s. Um, so it certainly can happen here with the proper investment in the industry and the infrastructure. All right, Dr. Kropp, Dr. Wu, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thanks for watching. We've got more great content for you from news to the arts to the environment. So be sure to like and subscribe to WGC's YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms for the stories that matter to you.